Okay, and away we go. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the Wednesday, February 10th, 2021, regular meeting of the Board of Selectmen convening at 5.01 p.m. In accordance with Governor Lamont's Executive Order 7B, Section 1, which suspends the opening meeting requirements of in-person participation, audio and video of this regular meeting will be simultaneously televised on Channel 79 and on YouTube in order to allow the public to view and listen to the meeting. In-person attendance will not be permitted. Any comments for the 6 p.m. public comment meeting were, were as according to the agenda, submitted today before 3 o'clock to Jerry Shaw. And with that, I will call the roll. Um, I forgot to make a list up, but I'll remember you all. Beth Heller's here. Sandy Stein. Here. Luca Cardozo. Here. Dwight Rowland. Here. Joe Dye. Here. Joe Crisco. Here. Tony Genovese, our finance director and administrative officer. Here. Great. Assistant Administrative Officer Betsy Yagla. She's waving, indicating she's here. <laughs> Town Council Jerry Weiner. He's waving as well. Executive Assistant Jerry Shaw. Present. Thank you. And Pua Ford is recording this meeting. Thank you, everyone, and good evening again. <laughs> Item one on the agenda is the first selectman's remarks. And I will read them quickly, I hope. Um, good evening and welcome to the February regular Board of Selectmen meeting. This coming Sunday, February 14th, will be our last scheduled free. I would ask everyone to do it if you're not speaking, please. Our last scheduled free COVID testing event at the center gym. This is a free PCR test and no appointments are needed. Results are usually ready in about 48 hours. I encourage everyone to take advantage of this program. These free tests help identify people who are asymptomatic or pre-symptomatic. Getting tested is important to help stop the spread and keep those you love safe. We're in Valentine's Day coming up this Sunday. That's why we talk about that. If you have been exposed to COVID-19 or think you are have symptoms, please call your doctor. And of course, continue to wash your hands, wear your masks, and practice social distancing. The town's human services department has done a wonderful job to help get residents aged 75 and older get vaccinated. The department reached out to more than 700 residents over age 75 to offer help getting a vaccination. Partnering with the Quinnipiac Valley Health District, human services also held a vaccination clear clinic here in town for 70 Woodbridge seniors, many of whom are our town's most vulnerable citizens. They have been able to get other seniors to QVHD's regular testing site in North Haven and also help residents to secure vaccine appointments at other locations. The dedication helping our residents navigate this stressful, complicated, and frequently changing system has just been nothing short of amazing, and I really want to thank them all. I've tried to forward you some of the letters that I have gotten in my office thanking everyone for this. They, they just above and beyond following through with these folks. A lot of them who don't have the ability to sign in on a computer and you know surf the web to find these things it's been incredible and these are the people that are most vulnerable and also totally afraid so she got them rides when she needed it was it was wonderful due to the pandemic governor lamont has suspended the reapplication requirement for those residents who take advantage of the additional veteran tax relief program and the elderly disabled homeowners tax relief program Anyone already enrolled in the programs will automatically maintain their benefits until the next application year in 2023. Additionally, I have learned that the town budgets $190,000 each year to fund the town elderly disabled homeowners tax relief problem, but we usually only use about 70% of it. Details of this program and eligibility requirements are on the town website on the assessor's page. If you or someone you know might qualify, please take a look. The deadline for new applicants is May 15th. The Economic Development Commission, EDC, is asking residents to show some love, there's a theme here this evening, for local businesses. Every Monday in February, the EDC will post a request on the town's Facebook and Instagram pages for people to share a Woodbridge business that you love and why. Everyone who responds on these pages by Friday at 9 a.m., it's a weekly thing, will be entered in a drawing for $25 in so-called Woodbridge Bucks, which may, 
then be redeemed at participating town businesses. Please visit the town website at www.woodbridgect.org for program details and a list of businesses where you are able to redeem Woodbridge Bucks. Please love your local businesses and shop and dine and try Woodbridge. Last fall, the town offered compost bins at discounted prices. The program was so successful that we had to develop a, a waiting list. Now we have joined our regional partner, South Central Regional Council of Governments, also known as SCROG, to offer a slightly different program for discounted compost bins and rain bar barrels. Composting is an easy way to divert heavy food waste, such as vegetable scraps and coffee grounds, from the waste stream, saving the town money, while creating healthy, rich soil for gardening. Program information is on the town website, including where you might purchase the bins. They will be available for pickup at the town's Earth Day event on the morning of Saturday, April 24th. This event will follow COVID-19 guidance. Masks and social distancing are required. Please save the date and details will come soon. As you know, because you participated in the recent budget presentations, both boards of selectmen and finance have been working diligently on the budget for the coming fiscal year. We've directed departments and commissions to be extra mindful of taxpayer dollars this year due to the financial impacts of the pandemic. Creating the town's budget is a long and deliberative process. It would not be possible without input from volunteer board members and commissioners and town staff. We will meet later this month to make our recommendations to the Board of Finance. The Board of Finance will then make appropriate adjustments to the budget. And finally, we will hold a virtual preliminary budget hearing in April, at which time residents may ask questions or make comments. Following that, the budget will be finalized and voted on in May at the annual town meeting. Every time we go through the budget process, it becomes clearer to me that we need to grow and diversify our grand list. We have consolidated staff positions and cut programs. There are very few ways we can make additional meaningful cuts to the budget without cutting services, which we don't want to do. So we need to focus on growing revenue. The 2030 task force is examining how to do that with a goal of having a healthier grand list by 2030. I look forward to hearing these recommendations. Attorney Leah Alexiatis, one of our citation hearing officers, has moved out of town creating a vacancy uh, in, as a um, citing, citing, citation hearing officer. I would like to appoint attorney Robin Burke as our second hearing officer. She joins the other current officer, Pat Matt. As you all know, the Town Plan and Zoning Commission is continuing hearings to consider an application to the regulations in the Town's Plan of Conservation and Development to permit multifamily housing in most of the town's residential districts with affordable cluster type housing. You may view the application and other documents and videos of the public hearings on the Town Planning and Zoning Commission page on the town's website, woodbridgect.org. Tonight in executive session, we will continue to discuss the issue, including the creation of a charge and also appointing a committee of town residents and land use experts to study these issues. Additionally, the board, as you know, has hired a town planning consultant to work with the Town Planning Zoning Commission to study the town's regulations. All the hearings are streamed live on local access cables, channel 79, on the Woodbridge WGAT TV YouTube channel, and on WebEx. The meeting agenda on the town website includes the link to view as well to participate in the meetings. I am confident that the Zoning Commission will review the application in a fair, thorough, and thoughtful way to provide an opportunity for all sides to be heard. And I'm equally confident Woodbridge will remain the wonderful community that we all come, have come to love. And with that, thank you very much. And we'll move on to item two. I see Dr. Bod's face waving hello. Um, Good evening, everyone. I'd like to introduce Woodbridge Board of Education Chairman, so actually Superintendent, sorry, Dr. Jonathan. Glad the floor is now yours and I will mute. Somebody I, 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 to turn it back on. <laughs> I have no interest in being the chairman. So please, thank I, you. Know, I just elevated to chairman plus superintendent. Now we have two jobs. <laughs> sorry about that. It's so good to see you. And I appreciate your final sentence, Beth, about the wonderful community Woodbridge is. And we think Beecher is a great part of that community. 
We hope to continue that legacy for years to come. I thought I would share three uh, topics with you all today. And of course, if you have any questions, happy to answer them. First, building on the theme of health and safety, the State Department of Education asked us all, and we have uh, encouraged and uploaded all of our employees age 65 and older for vaccination. You may be interested, that's 9% of our workforce. and. Uh, we are holding out that maybe we will be in line for the rest of our staff uh, for a clinic here at Beecher on February 22nd, but that will depend on the actual vaccines coming to QVHD between now and then. But our staff's very excited to be in this uh, on this path. The second I want to talk a topic I'd like to talk about is the budget. Uh, we continue to manage well the budget for fiscal year 21, and I appreciate your great interest in the fiscal year 22 budget. I want to talk about one topic that has come up since the uh, budget was presented to you at your last meeting. You may have read uh, that the federal government has awarded us a certain amount of funding in what's called the ESSER II entitlement, Elementary and Secondary Schools Appropriation. Um, and Woodbridge is going to receive slightly over $200,000, the Woodbridge School District, slightly over $200,000 in funds based on an application process that we'll be doing later this month and funds can be used uh, uh, later this year. We don't anticipate we'll have that need uh, next year and actually into the year even beyond that. Uh, the ESSER II was designed to help essentially mitigate the impact of COVID-19. And uh, in Woodbridge and everywhere else in the nation, we're seeing students experience learning loss, social and emotional, mental health issues, et cetera. There are some uh, security related and health related needs that every district has. So the state has developed priority areas that our grant application will need to address. We're starting to have some conversations at the board committee level about how Woodbridge School District uh, could interact with the priorities that the state has put forward. Uh, so, for example, certain uh, facilities needs or security needs will fall into that. Uh, we also think the grant will allow us to do some innovative work that we were not able to propose in our budget to help kids uh, who need support uh, get that additional support. But I also can tell you that we are seeing whether there are appropriate grant eligible activities in our proposed budget for fiscal year 22 that could be carved out of that budget and uh, ESSER II funding used for. Uh, however, we need more information from the state of Connecticut on this topic. We anticipate that the Board of Education will have a detailed proposal from me on its February 22nd meeting, which we will forward details from immediately to you for, I believe, your February 23rd meeting. But we are responsibly looking at that grant and uh, helping our students as well as helping the taxpayers of Woodbridge. Uh, and then my third topic is in the teaching and learning topic. Uh, so who would have ever thought this, but we had a, uh, a snow day yesterday because of the weather and the timing of it. But we have now moved to virtual learning on snow days. Uh, we, we decided to do that after our third traditional snow day. And uh, the reason for that is this mitigates the impact of going very late in June. We're currently slated to get out on June 21st, which is already a little bit later than, than, than loved. And uh, in fact, we could meet both worlds by having some learning and having some play. So we had a work group of teachers and parents who worked with me on this topic. And now, assuming that there's sufficient power or internet and internet in Woodbridge, snow days for the, at least the rest of this year will have virtual learning uh, from 8.30 to 12.30, learning first and uh, fun in the snow afterward. So uh, I got very good feedback from parents and teachers on that. It allows our learning momentum to continue. We're taking advantage of the technology that we have and uh, appreciate your continued support for all that we do. Happy to answer, Beth, any questions anybody has. Thank you very much, Dr. Budd. Um, I just want to let you know, I did distribute um, in, our pa in the board's packet uh, the, um, your, your, uh, you know, from the superintendent, your two, this, this, uh, newsletter. 
So Sounds like it. Excellent. Everybody, Thank everybody you. got it. So that's me. Um, yes. I got good comments and good feedback from the board on that when they got it. So thank I you for that. For that. that was okay. very helpful. Thank you. Nice to be questions. Anyone else have any questions or comments for the for, um, Jonathan? I, I Dr. Jonathan, just, it's go. worth uh, noting um, uh, where you are financially because the uh, amount of the deficit keeps decreasing each month. And I think that you're to be applauded for those efforts. Would you like me to say a little bit more about that? Um, we are we have reduced a deficit that was larger a few months ago to um, at the moment sixty nine thousand dollars for fiscal year twenty one, and uh, it's a team effort, uh, but it's quite quite ably led by Mr. Pulo and his team working with Mr. Genovese and all others in the district. We had a really thorough discussion about this Monday night at the Finance Committee of the Board. Granted, there are unusual things that can happen even in the last months of the year, but we do believe we will be able to mitigate that $69,000 down to zero by June 30th. Wonderful. Excellent. That's great what? news. Good. Anyone else have any comments or questions? Hearing none, uh, we move to liaison reports. And thank you. Thank you very much. Great. Excellent. Wonderful. Uh, Mika, I'll start with you. Okay, uh, I did attend the the recreation meeting, uh, <clears throat> recreation committee meeting that took place on January 25th. And one of the uh, there is an event there. Smith uh, is working on a scavenger hunt idea for the spring, um, a, an idea influenced by his son as a means by which to get people out onto the trails and things of that nature. So they're working through that to identify how best to work it out. But it is it does sound very it sounds like something that the town um, folks will really enjoy and certainly will help in terms of just introducing people who may have not may not have gotten to the trails um, a way for them to get out there with their kids and have some fun. Pool is going very well at this point in time. There's a waiting list for it to be used on the weekends. Um, they, everyone is complying with the rules. It's been, it's been working out very, very well. They are planning to put the, the tent that's at the country club. Um, they are going to move forward with moving that over to the Allegi property next to the, next to the, uh, playground. Very excited about that, particularly as relates to camp and they're making plans and making sure that they have everything set up so that they can get that done. Um, Fitness centers close outdoor facilities. John had uh, Zach Young doing inspections at the field to make sure that folks who were using the fields are adhering to the mask policies and the other policies that go with COVID. Um, tennis courts are closed for the season. Nets are down. Unfortunately, we're not able to get the skating rink up this year. They are looking to, uh, there's a football program that they're looking to open and a basketball program. Um, needless to say, spectators won't be allowed for those types of, uh, and obviously there would be, they will again be adhering, making sure they adhere to the COVID protocols. Uh, expenses are are down significantly as you would expect as a result of most of the programs being canceled and income is also significantly down as well. And uh, they do, they anticipate the, they are projecting a significant loss as far as camp is concerned, which is one of their biggest uh, revenue generators due to the limited number of people they'll be able to have um, to make sure they maintain protocol. And um, there are a couple of letters that were sent in complimenting the rec team, rec team, the rec group for the programs that they're having online. And uh, Jeanette Glissman also sent a thank you note for, for the $500 donation from the road race to the food and fuel fund. Re uh, field requests are pretty much what they were last year. Um, and uh, there was just one conflict that they worked that they're working out with the baseball and the soccer. And that's it. Thank you very much, uh, Sandy. Okay, I attended the library commission meeting um, this past Monday and everything is kind of running business as usual um, as they are operating in this COVID environment. Um, the park and pickup is still running very smoothly out of the meeting room um, and um, our residents are encouraged to participate in that program. Um, 
Uh, Eric will be posting the head of um, the children's um, division uh, position um, by the end of February so that he can start looking for uh, appropriate candidates for that. And uh, we did talk a little bit about um, the operating budget request for next year and um, the fact sure. that Based on how things go, perhaps there can be um, a gradual reopening that would impact, um, you know, the budget. Yeah, so and that that's take something that. Thing to his name. Exactly, yeah. yep. Tony, you're not on mute. Tony is muted. Okay. I don't know what it was. Okay. Anyway, so, um, and that's something that, you know, maybe we would want to consider for some of the other departments in terms of, you know, formulating um, how we might get back to a normal state. It's not all or nothing. It's gradually how do we, um, you know, reopen. And the point was also made that many of the library patrons who come on site um, are children who will not be vaccinated anyway and um, older adults. Um, who hopefully will be vaccinated uh, in the next few months. So that when we look at, you know, who uses the library, um, it, um, it may be able to not, again, go from where we are today to all of a sudden um, back to where they were over a year ago, um, but that their patrons may be appropriate and be more willing to utilize the library. So just to consider those things. And um, we will hear at the personnel committee a request for a promotion. Um, and I'll wait till we get to that point for that. And that's all. I have to keep on muting myself. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sandy. Uh, Dwight. Uh, unfortunately, I was, uh, I was not sent the link to the uh, Inland Wetlands meeting that was held in January. So I got an email the next day from Chris Sullivan's apologizing and said, oh my God, I left you off. So I'll, I'll try to get to the next one this month. And then I was not able to attend the human services meeting on February 1st because I had an illness. So I couldn't, I couldn't attend. So, but that's it. Thank you. Uh, Joe Dye. Yes, no report. Okay, thank you. And uh, Joe Crisco. Yes, uh, I have three uh, three reports. The first is planning and zoning, which met on February 9th. Uh, there was a uh, tentative public hearing scheduled for New England Brewery, but uh, that was continued to March. Uh, the second item was for a special exception for a liquor store at 245 Amity Road. Uh, there was concern uh, because of the distance requirement uh, near residents, and uh, uh, that was moved to uh, later on in the agenda, the public hearing. Uh, the third item, the Regional Water Authority had a site plan application um, for a new building near their existing building, two-story building. It would improve uh, the water process, and uh, so that will be heard uh, later on. Later on. Uh, there was a uh, application for a repair business at 33 Lucy Street, and that was scheduled for a public hearing. Uh, during the work session, uh, the proposal for a liquor store at 245 Amity Road uh, there was a motion to approve, and it was so moved. In regards to the site uh, plan application for the Regional Water Authority for a new building uh, on the West River side, that also was approved. Um, there was uh, an update on Scribe, which there was no meeting, and uh, a slight uh, change in zoning recreation on swimming pool. Then the uh, committee went to a uh, session on the uh, multiple, multiple housing issue at Two Orchard Road, and uh, they had a uh, discussion 
uh, for uh, two hours. Uh, the second item was the Board of Police Commissioners. There's just two two items uh, for the Police Commission. One is the posting of the position for Deputy Chief uh, that is available, and also a, a posting for a part-time temporary mechanic uh, because the present mechanic uh, has experienced uh, surgery. Everything else is uh, uh, on track. In regard to the fire commission, uh, it was reported uh, there, there's no uh, no major changes in anything except uh, there is a high degree of anxiety for the additional storage building alias of the storage shed. And that will complete the report. Hello? Okay, thank you very much, Joe. I said thank you. Wonderful, thank you so much, Joe. Um, okay, we're moving on to item four. Did I forget anybody? I don't think I did. Okay. Um, item four on the agenda is Brownie Troop 60865, a service project presentation. And I believe we have to let some folks in. So I will take a moment while we let our folks in. I, wanted, I see Sherry and Anna are here. Hi, Beth. How are you? Hey, how are you, my friend? We're doing great. Good. Oh, I gotta start my video here. Hold on. Yeah. There we go. Okay, we're here. And then the one thing is, I just I don't. My share button isn't on to share the presentation. I don't know if the host has to let me do give that power to me. Oh, there's Jen. Hi, Jen. Hi, Madison. Hi, guys. Hi, everyone. I'm just um. Yeah, I don't, I'm trying to share the presentation, but, oh, there's Veronica. Well, they're warming up. We have uh, some other folks joining us. I would ask if you're not speaking to please mute yourself. Because I can hear myself that somebody's living with me. <laughs> it's kind of fun. So that would be great. And um, I will, I will put this, I'm going to, someone's got a mute here. Anyway, the Bernie Troop, the girls are here to, to do a presentation to us about a project that uh, the little bit I heard about it sounds very exciting and that this girl feels. So with that, without further ado, I will turn it over to whomever's going to present this to us and I will mute myself. Fantastic. So hi, I'm Sherry. This is my daughter, Anna Fitzgerald. How are you guys? We also have... Uh, Jennifer Acker with us and Madison Acker with us. And we also have Veronica Halpern with us. So Jen and I are two of the co-troop leaders of our Brownie troop. Um, I'm trying, I still can't share my video, so I apologize. I can't show you. Oops. Oh, You're now the I'm now the presenter. So hold one second, please. What are you doing? Um, let me go to my screen. Here we go. Hold on one second. Hold on here. Can you guys see that? You got it? Okay, good. Yeah. So, um, first of all, we want to thank everyone for um, allowing the girls to be here tonight. We think it's a great experience for the girls, as well as for us to, I've never been to a selectman meeting, so I've been here eight years. So, thank you for letting me see the inner workings of everything. Um, so, we have two, three girls who are going to present tonight, um, and then myself and the other co-leader, Jen, will present. So, as Beth um, said, we're Brownie Troop 60865. Um, we're going to talk about, Madison's going to tell you who we are, why we're here. Um, then Anna's going to take us through what we're proposing. And then um, we're going to talk about, Veronica's going to talk through a little bit about where we want to do, where we want to do what we want to do. And then Jen's going to talk about our timeline and our sustainability of this project. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Madison, and Madison can talk us through who we are and what we're doing. Yeah. 
friendship and team building, practice the great activities of high school, and other fun activities. We've seen a sweet, sweet world of girls' journey in the fall, and this is our final project. We see a project that we're cleaning out and create. The project should be something that makes our community better for all people in Woodbridge. We want our project to be permanent so it can be enjoyed for years and years. Now Anna is going to tell you about what we would like to make. Thank you, Madison, for sharing who we are and why we are here. My name is Anna, and I'm going to share what our troop is proposing. As we all know, Fitzgerald walking trails are enjoyed by local Woodbridge residents daily in many ways. Fitness stations, benches, community gardens, and my favorite place, the dog park. But when we looked at how to make our community better, our troop saw something missing, positivity and joy. Science has proven if we had positive thoughts to our surroundings, we experience more happiness and joy. Our goal is to make each Woodbridge resident experience better at the walking trail. So we are proposing to place positive affirmation rocks around the walking trails. Here is a picture of the type of rocks that we propose to place at, place at the field. Now I'll hand it over to Veronica to share more details about the rocks. We can't hear her. Yeah, Veronica, honey, we can't hear you, sweetie. Better. The kind of rocks we are going to now. I now I help and we want to play this game of one sport under of Alex and the Great. And then we would like to run around the team of because that where the college of yeah. Great, Jen, I think it's over to you. All right. So as Veronica said, we have 16 girls in our troop. So the goal is to place a rock for every girl around, hopefully, the fitness trail, because that seems to be the area that's most used in our town. And our timeline is that once we plan everything out and get everything approved here in February, we're going to take the month of March to plan our rocks out, create them, and then once the snow melts, hopefully soon, um, more likely in April, we'll take a walk around the track, we'll plan out where we want to place them, and then the girls will actually release the rocks. The plan is that each spring, we'll take the troop walk around the track, make sure that there is nature that needs to be replaced or repaired, maintain the rocks. And as the girls get older, our hope is that we can actually pass the project down to younger troops at future. And we really appreciate your time here tonight, and we're very happy that we were able to present to all of you. Thank you. That was that was great. Okay. Thank you. I love it. Um, it was a little bit difficult in between here and there for me to hear it, but from I'm glad you had a you shared your screen because I think I pretty much understand what you have in mind. I want, would ask if the rest of the board has any questions for the girls. I just think it's wonderful that it's really the girls who are presenting. Um, their idea and their project and what they would like to do. And I think this could be a long lasting endeavor for the town. And it will be, I, I think people are going to want to take your rocks though, because they're going to like so much what they say <laughs> on them. So we may need some signs to ask people to please leave them there for others. Right. Yeah. Here, here, Sandy. That was a, that was a great presentation. It's, it's heartwarming. It's a wonderful, wonderful idea. And I got to tell you, it's uh, certainly made my day to hear you tell us about it. Thank you very much. 
Anyone else? Um, yeah, I, 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 yes, yeah, go ahead, George. Like, yeah, I'd just like to mention, um, along the Assumption Church on my son's driveway line, Mackenzie has planted rocks at each base of the tree, love, peace, and everything else. So she has them out there. So it is it is it is very it is very positive for everybody. And it's very nice to do. I encourage that. Good timing as well as Valentine's Day, but also to get us through this terrible time we're going through. It's it's just awesome. And happy things on the Board of Selectmen. I love it. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. Um, with that, unless there's any other comments, I will make a motion that we approve Brownie Tube 60865 service projects as presented this evening. Um, is there a second? Second. Thank you. Um, any other comments or questions? And hearing none, I would ask everyone to signify by saying aye. 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 Any nays or opposition? Hearing none, you guys are good to go. Thank you Thank very you much. So much. Thank you. Good job, girls. Good job. Tell Veronica to say hello to mom and dad. We will do. Thank you. Okay. Good night, everyone. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Stay safe. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. And with that, we'll move on to item five, which is the Police Network Proposal, Shonda Rosa and Police Chief Frank Capiello. Uh, I don't know if they're coming in or not, or being let in. I'll turn it over to Tony. He's the boss of this stuff. This is IT stuff, which is not in my wheelhouse. Thank you, Beth. While well, we're waiting for Sean well, and uh, Chief Capiello. Like, to like they, just, they just signed in. I guess they just got to get video going. It's yep. good. Yeah, uh, Sean will have a presentation for us. Hey, Sean. Hey guys. I want to may say a few words. Uh, so last summer, uh, the summer of 2019, actually, we presented a three-phase approach to improving the IT infrastructure, network infrastructure throughout the town, mainly in the town and in the police department. Uh, phase one of that was for uh, the town, which was, has been installed and is working very well. Um, and so phase two would be the police department. Uh, although the town is no longer... Um, Working with Amity on a day-to-day -day basis for our IT needs, uh, we have engaged Sean for this project to be our um, work on our behalf and to help with um, a very complicated issue. So Sean has agreed to do that. We appreciate that. Uh, and um, he has, he has um, helped us develop a scope of work and uh, develop the pricing. And I uh, would like to present to you a, a brief overview of the project. Well, thank you, Tony. Um, it's nice to see all you guys again. I'm going to try to share. So, um, like Tony said, this is actually phase two of a three-phase project that we presented, I believe, on June 12th of 2019. Can people see that presentation? Yes. Yes. Perfect. All right. So, I'm going to, um, in, in the interest of, of time and uh, and so that I don't, I have a tendency to talk in a circle sometimes where people just don't understand what I'm saying. I'm going to try to keep things brief and then maybe uh, answer any questions you guys might have towards the end. Um, and another reason for doing that as well is when we start talking about things like um, possible issues with security holes or um, places where we think that we might be vulnerable, it's not usually the best place to do um, in a in a public forum. So I may be a little bit purposely. Um, vague in certain areas, but uh, I can absolutely answer those questions later on if, if you guys have further questions. So with that all said, to quickly go through the upgrade, um, this is phase two of three. Uh, the upgrades are needed at, at the police station for uh, at least five really good reasons. Um, can you enlarge that at all, Sean? Thank I you. I can absolutely try. How about, does something like that help? Much better. That's great. Okay. Thank you. Sure. So um, the underlying network and hardware that is currently existing in, in the police station is over eight years old. Uh, and technology, usually anything between five and seven years is considered end of life. Uh, at that point, we start seeing software, hardware failures, as well as um, service agreements that go out of, uh, they, they just go out of life. There's, there's no helping if they crash. So at this point, most of the things that we're running on 
um, are being sustained by us without support for um, from the manufacturer themselves. So that's everything from servers to firewalls to switches. So those are in dire need at this point of, of replacement. Um, existing server operating systems are, are also end of life. Microsoft has stopped uh, supporting them. And so this is where I might not tell you exactly which version of the software it is um, because there are certain holes in certain operating systems that we might not let people know in a public forum. But if you'd like to know, I can absolutely let you know. But the bottom line is we really need to get everybody up to the latest version of the server software, which is 2019. Um, we're also currently running on a version of, of virtualization service called Hyper-V, which is a free version that's offered by Microsoft. The current industry standard is VMware, um, and this project would be an upgrade to VMware for all your virtual machines. Um, we have some upgrades that we're waiting to do on the next-gen CAD system. So the actual system that deploys the cars, that monitors the cars, um, and, and most emergency services through police department is currently a few versions behind because they do not support our older versions of the software with their newer versions of the software. So in order to get the newer systems from next gen, we need to have upgraded systems on our servers. Um, we definitely need some on-site and off-site backup and disaster recovery. We've all been hit a few times in the last couple of years with, to this point, um, and I don't have a whole lot of wood to knock on, but to this point, relatively smaller uh, incidents that uh, have just driven home that need for, for backups. Uh, we can put in all kinds of software and hardware protections, firewalls and antivirus and endpoint protection. But when it comes down to it, the biggest uh, the biggest thing that's going to help us recover from any potential attack is going to be backups. So we really want to make sure that we have a very robust uh, disaster recovery and backup plan in place. We have something in place now that's getting us by, but it's not it's not scaled up to size with the rest of the infrastructure. So we want to get that taken care of. Um, we want to create a migration path from our on-premise exchange servers, which is basically the police department is currently hosting their own exchange, their own email servers, everything else. Microsoft 365 is a cloud-based version that is built for government that will allow us to move those things to a more secure environment in the cloud, but that will also require um, upgraded services on our end. So if we don't have this, if we don't have the servers and software to support it on our end, we can't actually migrate it into the cloud. Um, Physical net networking, cabling, upgrading to fiber optic. There's currently no fiber optics other than what we did in phase one, which is the backbone between the three campus locations, which would be town hall, fire, and police. Other than that fiber backbone, there's no fiber running throughout um, the police station itself. Everything is still copper. Copper is okay for um, small bandwidth across short distances, but at this point, uh, time has moved on, and so is the technology, and we're in need of more bandwidth with redundant connections and, and that can be done with fiber. And then uh, we wanna migrate everything, the core infrastructure, which is currently smattered throughout the police station. There's a couple different closets. We'd like to get that all consolidated into one core closet, which would be that external radio room um, built off the back of the police station. It's uh, It's got physical controls, uh, locks and um, and, and security built into the building itself, but there's also environmental controls built into it. There are dust filters, there's electronic backup, um, there's protection against lightning hits and, and all kinds of natural disasters. So that's the best place to put the core. And so while we're redoing all the stuff, we'd like to move all the core systems out into that room. Um, so what we need to do that, there's uh, the Dell VRTX platform is what we actually currently used here at Amity just recently to do a couple of our upgrades. Um, it's a consolidated system that, again, this is where it, it gets a little technical, but it, it's actually, a, it's using one unit to do the job of what used to take three. So there's a cost savings there, there's a hardware savings there, there's an energy savings there, but it still performs the way you needed to do. So the SANS and the hosts are all one unit. Um, they're also expandable. So as we move forward over the next five to six years, instead of doing another full replacement, there's an opportunity to do expansion as opposed to um, major, major overhauls. So that would include the VMware update, which is your Hyper-V Center, uh, migrating all the existing servers onto that platform. The Veeam system is your backup system that we need to get in and, and get a good plan in place for. And then all your domain controllers. So Active Directory, DNS, DHCP. 
all up on the new Windows 2019 servers. Uh, while we're in there, we want to clean up all the existing wiring. Um, and that includes adding the fiber. But right now, if you were to stick your head in a ceiling um, at the police station, and it's not uncommon with older buildings, it's it's a mess of wires. Um, so not only cleaning those wires, but it's called toning and tagging. We, each wire gets a tone put on it, and we trace it from beginning to end, um, pull it all back again, and make sure we have new copper running where it's supposed to run, and it's properly labeled so everybody knows on both ends where, what goes, where, how. Uh, right now, it's it's a bit of a spaghetti mess up there. Um, and that happens over time naturally. That's just, you know, as we need more wires, we pull more wires, and over the course of 10 years or so, you end up with a lot of people pulling a lot of wire and nobody really knows what any of it does. So that's part of the project, um, deploying all the new data switching. So we're upgrading from what is currently a one gig switch to 10 gig switch everywhere. So everything is baseline 10 gig. Uh, on top of that, everything has redundancy. So um, where there's one 10 gig connection, there'll actually be two in case one goes down. Um, and where there's one gig connection on copper, there'll actually be two. So um, everything is doubled over for redundancy safeties. Um, Switching and stacking capabilities will be deployed and then redeploy the Veeam backup solution with the new servers. So that in and of itself is a job where we'll sit down with the police station and with Tony and, and anybody else who needs to be involved and come up with an actual plan for your backup. So it's not just let's make sure we back everything up every day. It's what do we need to back up? What's mission critical? What needs to be backed up? How often? Where do we put it? What's offsite? What's onsite? What's redundant? Um, and we come up with an entire plan and we maintain that plan after it's been put into place. So the project objectives is constant. It's this is sort of it's a little redundant. It's basically to put into place everything that we just talked about needing. Um, so deploying the VRTX platforms, deploying VMware, uh, migrating everything over to Veeam, migrating over the servers, deploying the Active Directory DNS and DHCP servers, reconfiguring and building all the switches. Currently, right now, the police station is on what's called a flat network. Uh, the new police, the new police station network would be a VLAN out segmented network. So what we do is we take specific traffic and we VLAN it out on the network within its own specific sub networks, if that makes sense. So what ends up happening is we can um, we can put certain traffic on certain VLANs and then we can prioritize those VLANs so that should we have issues or problems, the network knows how to make sure mission critical stuff stays up and stuff that's not quite so mission critical and get brought down while we bring everything else back up. It's just a, it's a safer way to do it. And on top of that, we can also say for things like the CAD system and the E911 system, we can segment out that traffic so that it can't be touched by any other traffic on the network and it adds security to the entire network. So if there is a compromise, we can protect and isolate um, data, which needs that protection isolation based on, you know, the nature of that data. So, Everything has redundant fiber. Everything has redundant copper. Um, so anytime we have one of anything, we really have two. So if one goes down, there's always a second one, um, which allows us to build the first one back up again while the second one stays up and there's no loss of, of function. We are going to reconfigure and relocate um, your FortiGate, which is your primary data center again, back into the, the data <laughs> video room, and then reconfigure all your Veeam backups. So right now, um, we have when we did the town hall during phase one, the town hall did get a Veeam backup um, on a VRTX in the Synology unit. So they are already using that upgraded backup system. Adding the same sort of a system at police station not only allows them to do the same sort of backups, but it also allows them now to use the resources at the town hall and town hall to use the resources at the police station on isolated networks using those VLANs to actually keep additional copies of their backups in two different locations. So now you've got redundancy atop of redundancy. So um, should the police server that is doing the backups go completely down, there's another set of backups that are sitting on the town hall's VRTXs and vice versa. So should something happen at town hall, not only are there backups there, but there's also a second set of backups at the police station. It's just, again, adding anywhere we can add redundancy, we always want to add redundancy. Um, when it comes to cost, these were the costs of the quotes that we got from TBNG. Um, and again, I don't, I, I do, I, I work for, in this particular situation, I work for the town of Woodbridge. I, I do not in any way, shape or form work for TBNG. So when they give me these quotes, we go through them. Um, we double check them against what we think is current market value. We, at Amity, whereas the other place I work, 
uh, we just did a really large project. Um, so we were able to kind of have some insight into current rates about what some of these things are going for, especially since we use some of those VRTXs. We used uh, New England Communication to do some cable poles and stuff like that. So we had a good idea about um, contracting rates at the moment. On top of that, everything that can be has been uh, tagged to a Connecticut DAS uh, purchasing contract. So we know that they have um, they have dealt with the state and the DAS, and they have done their their bidding to the state contract. Um, so we're getting the lowest possible prices based on state contracting. Um, the only additional that we added in after we did our walkthrough about a month ago now was the dispatch EOC backup location. In preparation for moving dispatch temporarily to the back room at the police station in order to redo dispatch, as well as creating a place where they have a backup um, for their mission critical systems, such as dispatch. We have added in uh, additional cable poles and an additional permanent switch in that back uh, EOC room at the police station where they can not only run dispatch while, while they're upgrading dispatch, but in the future, should they need to either add additional dispatch stations or move the existing dispatch stations again for some reason, they can do that quickly and easily by simply uh, moving the desks and back and plugging some computers into specific ports and dispatch will be back up and running inside of minutes as opposed to having to rebuild um, a backup EOC or dispatch center. So um, that number is not firm yet. We're hoping to kind of do some talking and get that down. That's a worst case scenario number. Um, but uh, it's definitely going to add some serious value to the, the project itself. So at the bottom, you'll see the total cost. That's with the worst case scenario number in there. And then a five-year lease to own option, um, which would change a little bit depending on current uh, rates and interest rates. And I'm sure Tony can speak more to that. That's kind of his wheelhouse. But um, the idea is that you lease it for five years and you own it afterwards. So none of, the, none of the equipment goes back again. It's yours. And then at that point, you hopefully get two to four more years out of it if you take good care of it. Um, and then we're sort of back into the end of life cycle again. And that's the bulk of it. Tony, just staying on the on the financial piece of it, I know that a lot of these companies who are offering these, these exact services also do it on a um, subscriber basis, if you will, uh, you know, like a, uh, not a not a not a ownership lease, but rather a lease that allows for that also will allow for upgrades and things of that nature as you go on forward. Is that an option or is that just not it just doesn't pan out in this situation? In this particular situation, based on the, um, the the way it was designed, and we felt that this was the best option, is to um, buy it outright, and then, as Sean indicated, after a five-year lease to own option, have it for a year or two before you have to redo the process. It seemed like it was more economical this way, as opposed to the other option that you mentioned. Is there is there a a, a piece of what we're currently spending uh, that's in the police department? budget that would defray this lease? Is there, are we replacing some things that go away? This is a capital, most of this is capital. Uh, okay. Yeah, so I would say not necessarily, uh, um, there may be some contracts, Sean probably know better than I would, but there's probably some additional contracts or software um, maintenance contracts that would be a result of this uh, that we'd have to redo. But I don't think they're much different. The ours were not much different. It was it was pretty similar. And is maintenance in addition to this, or is maintenance included in this number? Usually, the first year is included, right, Sean? Yeah, first so year third, warranty. But yeah. that sub subsequent maintenance is that in there or no? No. So first, the first year maintenance and warranty are are included in this price. Um, so that includes so like Veeam, uh, as an example, the Veeam backup software is licensed per. Uh, processor and the servers that you're running the backups from. So that first year that the Veeam system goes in and starts running backups is part of that, but then there'll be an ongoing yearly cost to maintain the Veeam licensing. Uh, it's the same thing with the VMware. So the VMware um, virtual solution will be an ongoing yearly cost. Um, I'm trying to think of what, actually technically right now, I believe at the police station, we put Veeam in you That's did. part of phase one. That's what we correct. didn't put in is the storage solution for it, the Synology. That's correct. Yes. 
So they're currently already licensed to use Veeam, but right now Veeam is dumping the backup data onto an older eight-year-old server, and we've already had some software and some hardware failures on that server. So, um, so the Veeam will not be an additional cost going forward than you're currently paying now. The VMware will be. Right. And the Microsoft the 365 will be. Right. If you yeah, if you decide to, to make that, that final move up into the cloud, yep, there's a there's a, a cost with the Microsoft licensing. Uh, this is this is Beth. I think the thing that stands out to me the most is that um, this is something we need to do for safety and security purposes. Um, we could be in big trouble if there's a failure at any point. And maybe I'm wrong. I, I don't completely understand all of the you did a good job, Sean, kind of getting us through this thing. <laughs> Clearly, it's not my uh, my wheelhouse as, as at all. But um, you know, in the event of failure, we could be in serious trouble, and this is a real good way to make sure we're safe and protected. And and I like the idea of double backups, as they say, you know, so that we're really protected. And it sounds like it's something we really need to do. Um, I just have a question about the lease to own uh, option. Um, is there because I just I don't. Once we own this, it, Tony mentioned another two years of before we might need something to improve. Um, will anything sort of be outdated, or you know, you're always? I know with technology, it's always improving. If we own it, do we have to start all over again with a whole new system, or are there just upgrades that could happen? So we're not stuck with something that's completely out of you know not working. Yeah. Anymore. No. So what we what we really try to do is, and it's very hard to do, is to project out where technology will be in five years because, like you said, it does move so fast. The nice thing about the VRTX servers, and that's sort of why we chose them here as well, is that they are expandable. So even if, um, say, you need more storage space, instead of replacing the entire host and the entire server, you really just pull out hard drives and you push in new hard drives, and your VRTX is like brand new. It's it's running with with expanded space. So. There is at some point, yes, all the stuff will have to be replaced. Whether or not it'll be in five years, I highly, highly doubt it. And I think if we maintain it and if you plan ahead to say, well, um, you know, when, when we're three years into this, if you say in two years the lease is up, what do we have to do to start kind of prepping ourselves to make sure we can get at least another five years out of it from here so that all in all we end up with an eight to a 10 year plan on this hardware? I think you'll be able to do that at much minimal, much more not minimal cost, but a lot less than having to do this project again. Like what you want to do is avoid having to do these every five years, you know, $200,000 programs. They just don't work. Um, at least they're not, they're not easily sustained in the budget process, but there is a way to, to sort of flatten that curve out a little bit and say in three years, we should put together a five-year technology plan that identifies where we think the technology is going and what we'll need to do in order to maintain our current level of of safety and there's always that balance right you're, you're we're we're mitigating risk we're not eliminating risk um but at some point the risk starts building faster and faster and faster and you you upgrade your systems to start mitigating that risk again and so you can no longer the return on investment just isn't there you pour money into an older system but you're still maintaining the same amount of risk you can push that out i guess is what i'm trying to say is you can push that out probably eight to ten years and and the way things are currently working if you plan ahead. So um, right now, the, the plan is to just replace everything because that plan wasn't, and I don't want to blame anybody, that plan, that plan wasn't really in place for the last five to 10 years. And so now we're sort of at the point where pouring more money into the existing system is you're not getting your ROI. You're, you're not getting any sort of return on investment because you're still in a bad space with high risk. So this is your kind of flip over the page. And then we we should probably get together and talk about at some point a nice three to five year plan where at least it doesn't come as a surprise when there is an additional purchase that needs to be made in order to stand this thing up longer um, for, for a long term solution. OK, thank you so much. Uh, the, the concept is spaghetti in the ceiling. I'm sure, you know, <laughs> that's got to get fixed, obviously. Wow. OK, thank you so much. Anyone else? Sandy? Yes. Um, thank you so much, Sean. That was really helpful. Um, could you um, help me understand the time frame is? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, for implementing all of this? Sure. So, um, and and I, I'm, I'm going to give you the time frame for where I would like to see it happen. But being that I'd have to go to TBNG and sort of get on them and, and push them a little bit uh, to make sure that that happens. 
and they're aware that that's going to happen. What would end up happening is once, um, if or once you guys approve this, uh, a PO will be issued to TBNG. Once TBNG has the PO, they start the process of writing a very complicated scope of work. That'll take them, at this point, it should take them no more than a week because they've been preparing for it for a while. I've been asking them to have that ready to go. Um, I'll spend a day or so kind of digging through that document to make sure that everything that you guys need and want is in there. Then I'll bring that to Tony and the chief, um, let them know that that's how that is. We bring that back to TBNG. In the meantime, once that PO has gotten to them, they will place the order for the hardware. Um, hardware is normally, this kind of hardware is normally anywhere between two and four weeks out sometimes. We notice a little bit of a delay because of the COVID stuff going on with stuff coming into the country from outside the country. Um, we did have to wait on some of our stuff when we did our project for about three to four weeks. Um, I'm hoping that that doesn't happen. There's, it's weird. Dallas said uh, two weeks ago that they were having a shortage of chips, microprocessors. Then they said they weren't. Um, if you read uh, CNN or Yahoo, I think Yahoo Money today that was talking about the same problem. So what we'll do is, um, once all that stuff is together, the actual doing the work, the wiring itself will probably take between four and six weeks. The actual racking and stacking of the switches, uh, toning and tagging all the wires and building everything else will probably be another four weeks or so. So once that PO is issued, all the balls start rolling and that's when we can start giving you guys updates. Um, as far as exact, uh, we can start narrowing down those timeframes, right? So once they have a PO, They'll call the distributor and say, I need this, 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 and this. The distributor will give them a time frame as to when that'll be delivered. They'll let us know. I can let Tony know. Tony can let you know, or I can let you know. However, you guys want to work that out. Um, but I, we can't give you an exact, an exact day because until the PO is written, we try to place the order. I can't really tell you as far as when stuff comes in. I can only tell you how long it would take to actually do the work. So like I said, so the wiring, maybe four to six weeks and probably about four weeks or so to do the actual racking, stacking, and engineering. You have to kind of tag that to the end of when the stuff comes in. Um, and that's that's right now the variable that uh, I'd be happy to give you a dates once we kind of start project moving. Sure. Um, so it sounds like it's really basically between three and five months that um, it would be completed. I think that's a good Yes. Yeah. Okay. Tony, could you help um, us understand then your request for tonight related to this system? Because it's a totally different number than anything Sean has shown us. So um, the, the request tonight is basically the purchasing request to start the uh, process of purchasing the items off of state contract and begin the PO process as Sean indicated. And then um, I will, and then, and then as long as you are comfortable with the lease option, then I will begin to get a pricing on lease purchase. I've already reached out to several banks and financing companies, and I go through a bid process where I get the, um, the lowest rate for a five-year lease. Uh, and then I will, um, once I have that firm, then I'll come back to you like I did with the truck, and uh, we will go through that process once the lease is final. Uh, but that. Mainly tonight is to get the approval for the purchasing portion of it and to begin the process. Thank you. Okay. What is the Anyone purchase else price then? Yeah, I had a question. What is the purchase price then for all the equipment? The two the two twenty six six right now is for everything, right? Correct. That's donation and everything. That's correct. What what is the piece then for the purchase? So we can issue, you know, so that he can go out. What is that? Oh, so you need to approve, approve the entire 226, um, and that'll be in a five-year, so the, the, the appropriations in five-year lease, uh, five years, you know, we've already have a year one was already done this year in the budget. So we already have lease payment in the budget already. Uh, okay. It's done in the current budget. So, um the, the funding part is approved when the lease is approved. This is just to authorize the town to move forward on beginning the project. That's the 226, 629. It's actually going to be a little less uh, depending on the price for the backup location and dispatch. So it's, it's so similar to like when you authorize the town to go ahead and order a truck for the fire department, then the town will order the truck. The funding is in the budget. 
and then when the when the lease comes in, you will, you will you know authorize the lease purchase. Okay, that's fine. Okay, no. Tony, is there any benefit at all to to looking at whether we can what the impact of including maintenance on this is? We could. I'm not sure if that's an option. We can certainly look into that. So there are when we did our last project, actually we we required that they add five years because we knew we were going to do a five year lease. We right. required that they included five years of service contract on everything that required a service contract, and then we rolled that into the lease. So and when you that say is, that, Sean, is that for is that for Amity? Yes. So is that's something any? we can well, reach out and have them do. It'd be great. I'm just wondering also, I'm wondering if there's any if there's any benefit in leveraging what we're doing with them. If they're, you know, obviously it's, it's in a sense, one big system. So it would be, it would be good to just know what they, if, if we can include the lease, that way we don't have any unexpected costs associated with uh, the maintenance. Oh yeah. And we're, we're, we're leveraging. Great. Thank you. Sure. Anyone else have any, from the board, have any comments or questions for Tony, Sean, Frank is here as well. Yeah, hi everybody. I just like to um, echo what Beth and Sean both said that um, you know these enhancers will be great and they'll align us with um, what's already been done in the phase one portion of the project. So we'll all have the redundancy and the storage and the safeguards of security. And we we really have stretched um, our IT knowledge over here pretty much beyond the limit. That you know right now we're we've been having as Sean knows and. And Tony, we've been having a lot of uh, problems, and pretty much on a, almost on a weekly basis, there's something that um, has come up to and has to be addressed. So we're really looking forward to moving forward with it. It's a necessity, and um, it'll, it, without a doubt, will really enhance our overall, um, you know, oper operability and IT efficiency. So, uh, thank you, Sean, for your help with that, and Tony. Uh, Frank, that's a good point you made uh, about how um, the amount of man hours, both internal with the police and externally with our consultant, will be hopefully significantly reduced as a result of all this new equipment. Is that correct, Sean? Absolutely. Definitely. So, I mean, right now you're on a fixed break contract, probably. So, uh, and so internally, we have a uh, sergeant who handles IT also. So, if it's, you know, as you know. Absolutely. Um, yeah, we could definitely free up some of his time by having, yeah, you know, it's, it's the old analogy of, you know, it's, it's a 30 year old car, you know, is that the mechanic and costs a whole lot more money to maintain than a brand new car. Um, it's, it's very similar. Once this stuff is up and running for the next few years, it should pretty much run itself, which frees up uh, time, not only for, um, for your internal staff, but also the amount of, of hours that you have to buy from your external uh, IT solutions provider. So there's a little bit of a cost savings there as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that, Frank and everyone else. Any other comments or questions? So there's something that comes up later on, which we'll be deciding uh, to funding request, correct, Tony? No, that's not related to this. Oh. Okay. Never mind. Okay. Okay. All right, anything else from anyone? With that, uh, is, there, is there some action that we need to take then this evening? Yeah, I would see you need to um, vote to uh, authorize uh, me, I suppose, to go forward with the proposal as presented by uh, Sean DeRosa. Okay. I'll, make, I'll, make, I'll make a motion. Okay, great. I'll make a motion that we move forward with the project as presented by Sean with the one stipulation of looking at possibly looking at maintenance being included in it. Thank you. I will second that. Okay, thank you. I'll third it. I think it's a great idea. Wonderful. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Silence. Wonderful. Okay. You're on, Tony. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Have you. a great night, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Sean. Thanks, Take Sean. care, Steve. Thanks, Thanks, Chief. Thank, Thank you, Frank. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Okay. Moving on. Um, let's see. I think, I, okay, we have uh, 611. Uh, we have 
item on the, ne the next item on the agenda is public comments. And uh, I will call on Mr. Shaw to see if there are any that were received by 3 p.m. today. Sorry, I was muted <laughs> and it was covered. Um, no, I didn't okay. receive any today, phone calls or emails. Okay, thank you so much. Um, next on the agenda is a request for new ordinance beginning, uh, I'm sorry, banning synthetic materials. I got to get new glasses. Jeepers. Okay, um, you have in your packet, let me just get there, I'm sorry. Um, a request from concerned citizens of Woodbridge um, re requesting a new ordinance to the town of Woodbridge uh, banning synthetic materials for consideration for the, this meeting this evening to the board. Um, this was dated February 3rd. We, the concerned citizens of Woodbridge, respectfully request consideration for a new ordinance in the town of Woodbridge, banning synthetic materials and requiring third-party independent testing, chain of custody for PFAS, total fluorine, along with heavy metals and all new man-made materials for the February for our meeting this evening. Um, I think that this is probably something that we should just refer to the Ordinance Committee for their review presentation uh, from, from these folks. We'll get back to them and ask them to please go to the Ordinance Committee once Meek is ready to set that up, which I'm soon he can't wait to do. And um, <laughs> and uh, so I'll, I'd like to make a motion that we refer this letter to the Ordinance Committee for further action. Is there a second? Second. Any question or question? Okay, I'll call the question. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any abstentions or nay? Hearing none, that that will go to the ordinance committee. So we'll get that scheduled. Um, let's see. Item eight on the agenda is an update related to the projects for bonding, which include the former firehouse. Um, the fire department storage shed, the senior center, and the Beecher Road School roof. Um, we thought that there would perhaps be some further information regarding cost estimates for the shed related to last month's meeting. And um, we're still working on it, unfortunately. There were even some developments today that I'm not sure we've got to get through, way through. So if, if possible, if anyone has anything further to add related to this, I'd be happy to talk about it this evening, but I think what I'd like to do is over the next week or so meet with the various people that have thoughts and ideas as to how we may move this forward, um, have several meetings out of this realm so we don't have to waste your time, not waste of your time, but bring a full presentation to the board. And with your permission, I'd like to find if we could do the this meeting regarding an update on these, this project prior to our pre-scheduled, already scheduled February 23rd budget hearing if uh, when we make our recommendations to the Board of Finance regarding the 2022-23, no, wait a minute, is it, whatever, <laughs> the next year's budget, I'll put it that way. So uh, does anyone have any comments on that? So you're saying that you want a meeting scheduled next week to discuss the other options that are being considered? No, I'm, I'm thinking about the Tuesday. I, I'd like to take the time on uh, off, you know, sort of offline, meet with um, some of the folks that have brought other ideas to, you know, that that maybe we, there's a way we can do this, get this project moving forward, specifically related to the shed. And I'd like to meet with those folks ahead of time. I wasn't able to schedule all this before tonight's meeting. So I'll have those meetings with different uh, factions. And then with the board's permission, we will add to the agenda on February 23rd, a discussion and possible action on the, this project. Thank you. That clarifies it. I appreciate that. Sorry. Okay. I had a day. I'm that's tired. <laughs> that's it. Joe, just, Joe, hey, Joe. Hi. Project mean the storage shed at the fire. Is that's he breaking up? Is he breaking up for me or, or is it just um, alone? Joe, I didn't, I didn't yeah, hear that either. Oh, good. Okay. Joe, could you say it again, my friend? Yeah. When, when um, My question is simply when you say this project, you're referring to the storage shed at the, at the firehouse, correct? That's one of the... Because, sure. Yeah, that's one of them. So I'm just trying to define what this project means because right. because the, on the agenda there's four 
items, and I'm wondering why those are all lumped together. Well, if you recall, I think that the we had talked about putting these four projects, the individual projects, the shed, the, the um, former firehouse community center, the senior center, and the Beach Road School roof into one bonding project. I don't know if I should call it a bonding project, but and the four pieces of that, I think we're comfortable in terms of the pricing, and I am at least. Um, the, the cost estimates for three out of four of these, the one that we have not been able to nail down, in my opinion, I could be wrong, is the storage shed behind the firehouse. So um, I'm still working on trying to finesse, change things, perhaps come back to you guys regarding, before we talk about the entire project of the four items, I'd like to work a little bit further with your permission on the storage shed estimates. Right, okay, that, that that's helpful. but. Okay. I guess my follow-up would be we're contemplating bonding all four. I'm just wondering what the contemplated process would be. Would someone have to would someone have to agree to bond all of these or would they be dealt with separately? In other words, my my thought was to put them all yes, together I in a in a bonding perhaps it is uh either a referendum or as we talked about, once we agree that we need to do all four of these, as we, I think it was two meetings ago, we got sort of a, 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 a somewhat of an estimate from Tony as to we're going to be able to, first of all, interest rates are quite low. And once we agree that we should do these projects, I think I thought there was some consensus perhaps not to put these into a, a an entire project rather than doing them, They, in my opinion, all of them need to be done, and it's perhaps a good time with interest rates being low. But the board yes, to well, except my to question would be this together, a bonding for, project. But if they go for a referendum, would there be four separate questions or one question? In other words, you have to agree to all of these, or that's what I'm struggling with. I understand. Okay, that's probably a Jerry Weiner or a Tony thing. Could we do them all together? Typically, what we do, uh, one way to do this is to have one bonding authorization, which our bond council will uh, create, which will encompass all four projects. That's one way to do it. Um, and that was the way we were sort of leaning here. So what, what's the advantage, if there is one, to doing it that way? through the bonding or financially or whatever. My, my concern is if you put, why, why would we put out a, a conglomeration like this of, and ask people to say, okay, you approve all these four projects. Someone might want to approve one or two or three or two and not all four. And uh, you could do them separately. them all together seems to me to, not to be the way to go because you're, you're not no, no one, the public then doesn't have the opportunity to decide on each project on its own merit. I, th I think Joe, one of the issues though, is that the renovations to the old firehouse are tied yeah. to the right. shed. Second, some good points. And, and I think the answer is no one has really decided yet. Oops. Can you repeat that Jerry? I yeah, you, you get it out there, Jerry. I, I would just say, uh, Joe has some good points, and I, and I don't think that uh, Tony or Beth or, or anyone or the board has yet thought through whether it should be one bond or four separate bonds. I think that could be decided once we get some more detail, and it'll be up to the board of selectmen whether, and bond council's recommendation, whether you do one or you do uh for separate issues, um, and I don't have any opinion on that now. It's just a pure decision by the Board of Selectmen as to how, and Bond Council as to the best way to go, but I don't think any decision has been made one way or the other at this point. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I do want to make... No, I think, Joe, you're making a very good point, but I do think we have to recognize that the um, renovation of the old firehouse is tied to providing a shed in the back of the current firehouse. So well, I guess you, depending you, 
what use we agree to for the old firehouse. Okay. Right? I mean, but, but I understand what you're saying, but but then, then we have a senior center and, and a feature road roof. So someone might say, well, I, I'm okay with those two, but I'm not okay with the firehouse. I, I just think it's, I, I'm not sure I'm sold on the idea that we should lump these all together and have the public decide whether well, we either want all four of these or, or you don't. I'm not sure that's the way to go. But as Jerry says, we have time to develop that. Sure. And and I think there will be it will be important to get recommendation from bond council as to the best way to do it. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Okay, so uh, is everyone okay with moving this to add this to the agenda of the February 23rd meeting for further discussion? I am. Yeah. Okay, I don't think we need to take a vote at this consensus. Okay, hearing nothing, we'll do that. All right, thank you, everyone. Um, next item on the agenda is uh, oh, Administrative Officer Director of Finances Report, Tony. Thank you, Beth. You're welcome. The, uh, so I have the report through January of 2021. The report has a surplus of $43,000. The Board of Education information is not available at the time I created this report. So um, if you factor in Dr. Bud's um, announcement of a $69,000 deficit, that increases the surplus to about $68,000. And... Um, it sounds like there's hope. Uh, they're hopeful to eliminate the deficit entirely, which would add another seventy thousand dollars to the uh, projected surplus. At the forty-three thousand dollar figure, our fund balance is about six point one four million dollars, or twelve point two six percent of our annual expenses. Our current our tax collections are currently anticipated to be on budget this year. We might actually have a little surplus there, depending on. Um, how the uh, returns come in for the uh, deferral program. We currently had about $200,000 deferred for um, under the uh, second uh, deferral program. And that's a little less than the um, number from the spring, uh, from the, I mean, excuse me, from last summer. Um, our intergovernmental revenues are a surplus of $100,000, mainly due to uh, the receipt of $163,000 we received in coronavirus relief and FEMA funds for COVID-related costs, which were costs from F fiscal year 2020, which is where the bulk of our costs were. Um, we do have a meeting coming up for um, the beginning of the process for uh, uh, hopefully getting reimbursed for our costs related to the storm in August, which would be, um, we spent up to $200,000 on that storm. So I'm hopeful that we'll also re receive some of that back, at least a portion. Our investment income is uh, projected to experience a deficit this year, about 130,000, and um, our rates, the rates for investment income continue to be extremely low. And uh, our department charges is a deficit, just a slight deficit there, mostly from our transfer station fees of about 100,000. We've, we've discussed that in the past. Uh, that is offset by surpluses in town clerk fees of about $25,000, conveyance fees of $20,000, 10,000 in building permits and $7,500 in public safety fees. So other areas have picked up the slack where we've lost some ground in our transfer station. Uh, we do have a surplus projected in our transfer station of about $30,000 due to reduced waste. Um, our benefits is projected a surplus of $160,000, mainly due to workers' compensation savings and we have some healthcare savings due to some changes in coverage primarily. And finally, uh, the Board of Education is now projecting a $69,000 surplus through December. This was December, so that's through January. The uh, $69,000 was through January. So given the fact that we had so many unknowns beginning the year, um, and the fact that we are currently have a surplus, I think is a um, uh, remarkable. Miracle. Yes, a miracle is a good word. And uh, we owe a lot of thanks to a lot of people who helped make that happen, including many of our departments and, our board, and the Board of Education, who's, who's um, also um, 
doing great work there. So. I think the diligence of all of the um, town department heads um, and the board are uh, need to be recognized. And, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we're very fortunate um, to have all those individuals be working for the town. Okay. Are there any questions or any particular line item or any particular topic I can answer? Very helpful as usual, Tony. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is tax refunds, and you have in your packet um, a summary from Tech Risk, our tax collector. There are no um, uh, real estate refunds. There's one personal property refund and several motor vehicle refunds. The total for this month are 2315 I will move acceptance of that. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Sandy. Any comments or questions? All in favor, please qualify by saying aye. 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 Any names or abstentions? Hearing none, that passes. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Item C is funding requests. And pick up my folder here a little bit. Sorry. First item is. Let's see, 2021 16. Is that correct? Correct. That's the first one. Okay, thank you. Um, this request is to purchase a replacement printer in the police chief's office. The current printer is broken. Anything on this, Tony, that you might want to add? No, it's pretty self explanatory. Okay. I'll move approval of line item transfer number 2021. I will note that this is coming out of a line item within the police commission. Professional Developments Conferences in the amount of $2,000. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mika. Any questions or discussions? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Hearing none. Thanks so much, guys. Uh, funding request number 2021-17 in the amount of $9,915 um, for funding the town's IT firm to perform. Oh, this is, I know what this is, for additional engineering related to the improving the town's cybersecurity uh, posture and resiliency. And I'll move acceptance. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Sandy. Um, Tony, take it away for any <laughs> So um, we had a, um, a cybersecurity review as part of the election process, and um, this is to implement. We did as well. We did well. There were some suggestions that we could implement, which um, I won't go into specifically. But safe to say that um, this will help to implement those suggestions to further increase our cybersecurity resiliency. And to as, as you all know, we're constantly under threat for um for that and so um, this will help to improve uh some of the uh areas that were mentioned tony this is just, this is a this is a capital expenditure no this is uh, all four hours most of it is four hours for um piece a piece of it is for um, a software for multi-factor authentication, but the rest of it is for engineering hours related to, um, you know, labor basically for correcting and, and up the updating and adjusting certain things. And is it TBNG that we use for this as well? It's TBNG, correct. Hey, Tony, Dwight, is this for all the... All the systems in the town, the fire, police, and town, and library, and everything else, or? It's for um, town. Um, it's mainly for the town, the library, human services, most of the town infrastructure. They, they um, it, and that's what the focus was. Police, because there's been so many changes. Um, we we didn't get into that with the police just because a lot of that's going to change anyway. What about fire? Fire, uh, I, I have to check. I, I know they've been recently had some reviews themselves, but they weren't part of this particular project. Uh, 
Okay, that's fine. Are, are you going to follow up with them, with them, and find out, or I, I'd be happy to. Yes. Okay, no, I'm just curious. That's all. Okay. Okay. Anyone have any other comments or questions? Thank you. We have a first a, a motion and a second. Uh, I would call the question. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Joe and Joe. Aye. Thank you. Um, any, any nays or abstentions? Hearing none, the motion passes. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Let's see. What is, is that it for funding requests? That's it. Okay, good. And we did uh, we did tax refunds. Um, let's see. Um, so, Tony, this is your your uh, estimate that we just asked you to look into. Perhaps you want to go over this. There's a, uh, it's an interesting uh, piece of information for the board. I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, Thanks. Strictly, yeah, so strictly for information, you had asked at a previous meeting that I work with our maintenance department to put together a uh, cost for renovating the dispatch center in its current location. These are some of the costs that were put together after reviewing the matter with the police uh, chief and with the uh, Brad Parsons, our maintenance department. You can see it was broken down by segments, so you sort of get a, an idea of, um, you know, how much each one costs and, um, you know, what's involved in the renovation. So you can see a fair amount of the renovation costs are for um, relocation costs. Sean mentioned that earlier. And um, moving all of the connections and all the telephones and all that stuff. Um, if the police project goes through, there's some redundancy here. Uh, probably not the Norcom radio cost because that's actually moving a lot of the radio equipment. But there could there's some redundant cost that could be um, eliminated because it's part of the police project creating that second uh, dispatch location. Uh, there's also a, a cost in there for furniture. If you've seen the furniture in there, I'm sure if we move that furniture, it might not be easily put back together, and it's pretty old. So that's why that cost is in there. But just for your information, there's no um, request this evening. Right. I, I think it's very helpful, Tony, to have this, and we should keep this in mind as um, uh, we continue to look at this operation and what's needed um, right. to have it operate at the level that everyone is happy with it. Right. I thought it was a good idea also so that you have an idea of this is one of many factors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else? Sam, did you want to say something else? Okay. <laughs> All righty. Anyone else have any comments or questions? Thank you very much. This is uh, very interesting. Thank Thanks, you. Tony. Okay. Okay. Um, any, oh, here we go. Any other other? Oh, I'm all set. Thank you. All right. Wonderful. Um, next item on the agenda, number 10, is the Personnel Committee Report. Um, let's see. I'll get the papers over here. Uh, this morning, the personnel committee met, consisting of me and Sandy and Dwight, along with uh, Tony, and we had um, a request for our library director from, I'm sorry, from our library director, Eric Worthman, um, that the, letting us know that the um, library commission had a regular meeting and approved the hiring of, they voted unanimously to recommend Sarah Shepard for the full-time position of head of circulation. And uh, it came, I guess, up at the meeting, the library commission meeting, as Sandy mentioned, on this past Monday evening. And it was probably the appropriate time to put this forward to the personnel committee, which we did. And it was the unanimous vote of the personnel committee this morning that we um, that this this uh, take place, that she be hired as the uh, full time uh, head of circulation. She is currently serving in the library as a part time circulation assistant, but has been apparently a, quite a good member of the library staff and fo folks were very excited about this position. I guess everyone was kind of rooting for her to get this. So um, as I said, it was the unanimous decision of the uh, commission of the uh, personnel committee to move this forward to the uh, board selectmen for, for a vote. And um, I'm sure everyone knows Sarah quite well. And um, I don't know if Sandy or 
Dwight have anything to add from our meeting this morning? I would only <laughs> add that she has many, many years of library experience. And I think that's, you know, been a great advantage to us at the Woodbridge Town Library. And so she, you know, utilizes that experience in terms of taking on this role. She was the head of the Bethany Library for five years as the director. Um, so she comes to this job with uh, a lot of expertise. Thank you. I agree. I agree with Sandy too. I've known Sarah for a number of years. And she is a wonderful person. So, and the one thing we need to also do, Tony, is the salary, what her salary will be moving forward. Right. We'll do that as part of the motion, as we did in the uh, um, uh, person, uh, the personnel committee this, this morning. Um, I, and it's my understanding from Eric Sandy S. this morning, and Eric uh, commented that they're not at uh, this time going to um, fill the position of part-time part circulation assistant. So there'll be a vacancy there, but they're not thinking about filling it. So that's some savings there. Um, anyone have any questions on this? With that, uh, maybe one of you guys would like to make the motion. Sandy or me, or uh, Dwight, sorry. I think Beth, you have all the numbers associated with it, so. The only thing I don't have, I didn't write down, it's on another piece of paper somewhere in this office, is the salary. But I know that we voted. 50. What? 4950. 40,950. Thank you. We did. So I'll, I'll make the motion then if you want me to. Um, the motion is to hire uh, uh, Sarah Shepard, uh, start date of um, Tuesday, February 16th effective that date at an annual salary of $40,950. Is there a second? Second. Okay, thank you. Right. Any other comments or discussions on this? Hearing none, all in favor? Yep. What? Okay. I'm hearing things. <laughs> um, hearing none, uh, no other comments. Uh, any, any uh, call the question. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, Thank you. Any nays or opposition or abstention? Sorry. Hearing none, Sarah Shepard will be hired or be, take this job, assume this job as of February 16th. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm happy about this one. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. We're up to Assistant Administrative Officer's Report. I see Betsy sitting there waiting, waiting patiently. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I want to let you all know that. Uh, we've been approached by an Amity High School student, Tina Berland, who started a group called Woodbridge Together. And she is working on a project to raise funds for the Rotary COVID-19 Relief Fund. And she will be selling luminarias with battery-operated tea lights. And she um, and several volunteers will set them up on the town green and a few other spots like um, the strip of road in front of the um, tennis courts on Central Road, for example. And she'll be doing this on March 15th, I'm sorry, March 13th, which is the one year anniversary of when schools and businesses in Connecticut closed for pandemic. So she'll be um, selling these luminarias and the proceeds will go towards COVID relief funds. And um, people will have the option to have the luminarias either at their home in their front yard or in these public spots um, as a way to bring us all together while being apart. So I will put a link to purchase those luminarias in the town's e-newsletter that will come out later this week. Um, but it seems like a, a really nice project uh, to mark this sad anniversary. Um, uh, on another note, uh, as you probably all know, the town did not receive the DOT grant to create a sidewalk and bike route in town. However, I found a way to accomplish a very small portion of the project. Through Sustainable CT, we can do a $15,000 project through a combination of fundraising and a matching grant from Sustainable CT. So I'm working on a crowdfunding page right now that will allow us to create the bike route with signage, 
and um, we'll also be able to get a few bike racks and install a few solar powered speed awareness signs. Those are the signs mounted on existing speed limit signs that tell you how fast you're traveling so you can see the comparison between what you're supposed to be doing and what you are doing. Um, and my goal is to have the crowdfunding sign site set up in time to be in the town's e-newsletter this Friday. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to get a small portion of that larger project completed, maybe as early as the spring or summer. And the last thing I wanted to let you all know about was uh, Woodridge Bucks. This is the program Beth mentioned. It's being run by the Economic Development Commission. And there were more than 20 comments on the town's Facebook page during the first week of the program. Um, weekly, we are requesting that residents share recommendations for local businesses. Um, those 20 comments were put into a raffle and we gave away five $25 Woodridge Bucks vouchers. So people seem to be really enthusiastic about the program. We're midway through our second week. Um, and again, Friday morning, I'll put the names of everyone who's commented into our hat and select winners. Those vouchers then go out into the community and people are able to use them at participating businesses as if they were cash. And the businesses turn the vouchers into the town and we cut them a check for $25. So the businesses aren't out anything, um, encourages residents to spend more locally and also gives businesses nice referrals in a very public forum. So I would encourage everybody to uh, do that to help promote our businesses. And that's it for me this evening. That's great. Thank, Thank you, Betsy. Anyone have any comments or questions for Betsy? Thank you for all that good stuff. Happy report. <laughs> Thank you. Um, item 12 on the agenda, um, I will make a motion that we acknowledge receipt of the town clerk's reports, which are in your packet. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mika. Any comments? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any abstentions? Nays? No. Okay, great. Um, item 13 is uh, the minutes, which are in your packet, the very extensive, wonderful minutes. Uh, from the Board of Selectmen regular meeting of January 13th, 2021. Um, I'll make a motion that we approve them. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, any comments, edits, changes, suggestions? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor of those minutes approved? Um, please signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Any additions or, uh, I'm sorry, I already did that. Any nays or abstentions? Hearing none. Okay, the minutes are, are approved. Thank you so much. Uh, next item on the agenda is the appointment of an EMS Regional Council um, person, representative. Uh, this position is through December 31st of this year, 2021. And um, Frank Capiello has agreed to assume the position that sounds bad, but you know what I mean. Um, with the Houston Police Department to to uh, hold to finish out uh, the the term of uh, Deputy Chief Ray Stewart, who was serving in this role until he retired. So um, I'll make a motion that we approve that appointment. Is there a second? Second. I think I heard a second. Joe, was that yeah. Joe Crisco? Yeah. Okay, thank yeah. you. Thanks so much. Um, all, uh, any comments or questions on this? Hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Sounded unanimous. So I won't even ask if there's any abstentions or nays. Thank you so much. Um, next item on the agenda is the town council's report. And I know Jerry Weiner has been very patient with us sitting there. <laughs> very patient. Oh, you're up, my friend. So I just have uh, a report on what is on executive session. So if we can move into a get. So Chuck is, um, is uh, Chuck Tiernan coming for the. Uh... Chuck is here. He's an attendee. And as soon as we're ready, Jerry will, Jerry will promote him to a panelist. Okay. So I think we're ready for him. I think we okay. can go. To... We're good. And there he is. Could we, um, while we're with, he's in, we have to go into executive session first. So before I know Chuck is now here, but before we start talking, I just want to, um, I, if it's okay, I'll just make a motion. Are we going to do these both together, Jerry? 
Yes, you can do them both together. The same people are relevant on both issues. Chuck will leave when we get to number B, correct? Yes, correct. Thank you. Um, so, uh, pursuant to Connecticut General Statute 1 200, paren 6B, 1 210, parens B2, the heart and hypertension, um, I will, we will go into executive session. I will make a motion that we do so and invite into that, that executive session Attorney Jerry Weiner. Uh, Finance Director Tony Genovese and Attorney Charles Tiernan. And then the second one, pursuant to Connecticut General Statutes 1206B, discussion regarding the application to amend the zoning regulations and plan of conservation and development. And in that, Chuck will leave uh, item A, he'll leave that meeting, and then we will have in Board of Selectmen plus Attorney Gerald Weiner and Finance Director Tony Genovese. Putting that all together, I've made that motion, I think, appropriately. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Joe Crisco. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor, please, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any abstentions or nays? Hearing none, we will ask the folks that unfortunately are not invited to please leave. <laughs> on. Okay, wonderful. Um, so we are now out of executive session. There were no motions made nor votes taken during executive session. And uh, we have one action as appropriate. And I will call on Attorney Weiner to read the text for the motion because it needs legal advice. And we also have Attorney Tiernan here to make sure the motion goes appropriately and also to listen to this. So thank you. Jerry. <coughs> Chuck, here I go. This is, I think this is the language uh, you talked to us about. The yes. Board of Selectmen hereby authorize a workers' compensation settlement with Deputy Chief Raymond Stewart on his workers' comp compensation claim in the amount of $100,000, payable in two equal installments of $50,000 each, with the first installment due July 1, 2021, and the second installment due July 1, uh, 2022 and authorize attorney Tiernan to uh, sign a stipulation to that effect in behalf of the town. Yeah, that's I'm uh, sorry. I, I, you might want to mention that it's pursuant to the provisions of the heart and hypertension statute. So on his hypertension pursuant to what's the statute? S uh, Connecticut general statute section seven dash four, three, three C. Four, three, three C. Yeah, got well, it. We'll accept that addition to the motion. I'll make that motion as Jerry read it. Um, is there a second? Second. Okay, thank you, Dwight. Any further discussion on this motion? Yeah, got it. Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any abstention? Any nays? The motion passes unanimously. Thank you, everyone. Um, that's all of the actions out of executive session. Um, I will motion that we adjourn the meeting. Is there a second? Second. Second. Thank you. Non-debatable, this one. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And we will aye. meet. We'll meet again soon, guys. All right. Thank you. Thank you.